Now, from the WDEF News 12 Sports Desk, brought to you by Xfinity, it's Touchdown Friday Night, sponsored in part by your Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union and Saxman's. It's Friday, it's football, so welcome to Touchdown Friday Night. I'm Rick Nyman. And I'm Webb Ryan. We kick off tonight's coverage with Calhoun and Dalton. The ultra-successful Yellow Jackets are moving up in classification this year from 2A to 3A, but that likely won't slow Calhoun down. Calhoun has given Dalton fits over the last few years, winning five straight against the Catamounts, who have always been in a higher classification. Dalton has had a knack for jumping out to big leads against Calhoun, so it should surprise no one that they were up 14 to nothing at the half in this one. But maybe Calhoun doing a little river dance. Maybe that would bring them some luck. And guess what? It would. Second half, the Jackets cap a 90-yard drive with a touchdown from Cole Jackson. That would cut the Dalton lead to 14 to 7. These ladies still have faith, but the Catamounts, they would have to punt. Here come the Jackets again. Kaylin Riley swings it out to Carson Brown for a big gain. But at the end of the play, watch as Brown gets up, and that little shove right there is going to cost him 15 yards. No problem. Calhoun goes back to Cole Jackson, who picks up that much and more. And maybe now it's just time to get a little worried. Jackson again. And watch this. Yeah, I'm going to get there eventually. There, there he is. In for the score. We are all tied up at 14. Catamounts get the ball back. Peyton Veraldi rolls back his passes, batted around, and eventually picked off by Austin Bennett. And guess what? It's like deja vu all over again. Aliko Brown carries around the left side and to the pay window. Cashes in for six as Calhoun turns out 21 unanswered points. Steals another game from Dalton, 21 to 14. County clash between Signal Mountain and Tyner. Opening moments of the ball game, Eagles quarterback Jack Teeter just lofts this football and it falls right in the lap of John Ryan Wilson. Signal Mountain, the early 7-0 lead. Eagles in with a gift for Tyner. They fumble the punt and Corey Lawrence recovers for Tyner, but the Rams couldn't cash in. With Signal Mountain now up 14-0 in the second quarter, it's the give to Caleb Menzel. He catches the sidelines and picks up a nice gain. Then with Signal at the goal line, it's a quick misdirection. So quick, we didn't see who scored, but it's a touchdown. Signal led at 21-0 at halftime. Eagles pitch a shutout with a 35-0 victory. Let's roll on to the touchdown Friday night scoreboard. Bradley Central goes on the road and loses big to Riverdale, 42-7. McCauley, they win big for the second straight week, 49-6 over McMinn County. Ottawa comes back on the road, a hard-earned road victory for Ottawa as they beat Siegel, 24-20. And Stratford beats Howard by a final score of 35-14. Heritage has never beaten rival Ringgold since the Generals opened their school doors in 2008. They came close in 2011 by losing by only one point, but tonight Heritage had to face a Tigers team coming off the most successful season in school history. And the Tigers were great last year and at home and did not take long to assert themselves with authority. Second play from scrimmage for Ringgold, DJ Goins is going, going, gone, 63-yard scamper. Okay, a guy that big doesn't scamper, but it's a 63-yard score. Nonetheless, 7-0 Ringgold. Tigers get the ball back, and it's Kyle Scholl ripping off a chunk of yardage. However, on this possession, the Tigers would have to settle for a field goal, and they go up 10-0. Meanwhile, Ringgold and their defense up to the task. A huge sack coming up from Michael King. Ringgold takes over, and Heritage fans, you don't want to watch this. Hard to replace a Slade Dale, but Devin Lancaster is trying. Goes deep and hits Garrett Yates in stride for the 52-yard score. And Ringgold goes on to win it by a final of 44-23. County clash, Notre Dame and East Ridge. Pioneers assistant signals for chicken wings, or maybe it's the sign for an onside kick. Pioneers trailed 14-13 to start the second half when they execute the onside kick to perfection. John Engel the recovery, but the Pioneers could not take advantage of the good field position. Later in the third, Pioneers JoJo Tillery's pass is tipped by Notre Dame's Kareem Orr. Kelly Green with the interception. Green a nice return before he's finally brought down at the 12-yard line. Irish then faced a fourth and two from the three. Let's go for it. The pitch to Austin Banks, and he tumbles in for the touchdown to make it 21 to 13. Final moments of the third quarter. Alex Darris to pass, but Reggie Marshall gets in there for the sack. But the Irish got two more scores in the final quarter. They go on to beat East Ridge by a final score of 34 to 20. Let's scamper to the touchdown Friday night scoreboard. There we go. 
No good news for Brainerd. They fall to Ensworth 55 to 7. Central, they beat Polk County 24 to nothing. Ray County goes on the road tonight and gets a big one over Coffee County 42 to 6. And 42 points likewise for Walker Valley as they beat Sequoia 42 to 22. Plenty more highlights to come on Touchdown Friday night. South Pittsburgh and Hickson fight for their first wins of the year. And would McMinn Central have a victory hangover as they traveled to Boyd Buchanan? Plus, Soddy Daisy looks to spoil a big celebration for rival Redmond.